Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. You know how much I preach the importance of prayer? And I do that because I want people to know that prayer, whether it's a small little throw up to God in the middle of the day, Lord, thank you, you're praising him because It's a beautiful day and you just saw all these birds flying in front of you. And in any other circumstance, you would have never seen it because you would be self-absorbed in your own little life, forgetting the creation around you and how amazing God is, to sitting down in deep contemplative prayer, deep Christian meditation, whether it be at your home or in front of the Lord in adoration. I keep harping on this fact and I keep going back to the two greatest commandments because you cannot do the second one without the first one. And so many people are missing the first one. Keeping God the center of your life, giving him that time, that currency, hopefully first thing in the morning. And why? Because you're going to go face the day. You're going to go face your literal neighbors, people that you work with, people in your family. And these are the people that you need to love just where they are. But we're we're not just called to love. We are called to be disciples and to bring people to Jesus and then make them disciples. That's quite a task. And doing it without prayer is impossible. It's, it's impossible. But the more that you commit yourself to prayer, this true relationship with God, and you understand what it is and why we do it, it hits your soul your mind, your body, your life. It impacts your life. That means that you are now living in the spirit of God. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But first, I do want to ask something of you. I don't do this very often. But I want you to take prayer personally to commit it to your heart because your life will change when you have this relationship with God. And when I mean relationship, I mean, it's a dual conversation. It's not always reading things which are wonderful, such as scripture and, uh, the liturgy of the hours. That's something that I was just talking to another person about who reads that all the time throughout the day. That's wonderful praying the rosary, praying the divine mercy chaplet, stopping throughout your day to pray, praying the 
memorari, whatever it is, those prayers are wonderful. They're wonderful. But it's that next step from vocal prayer to mental prayer that made the difference for me. Because then I was shutting up. I was stopping my mouth. I was stopping my mind. I was stopping with all of my whining and complaining and praying and begging and pleading and all that, right? It became a time to listen. But my goodness, you can't get to that point if you're not even just setting some time aside, hopefully again, first thing in the morning, and we'll wrap that up at the end. But here was my whole point. I had a, I think she was, she's 25, 24 years old, and she saw me speak in Iowa probably three years ago, and she just mentioned it to her pastor. She walked up to her pastor out of the blue and said, Father, can we have Kendra Von Ash come here and speak? And he was following me on Facebook. I had no idea. He sent me an instant message, one of those personal messages, and I responded back. And before you knew it, we had a date, we had an agreement, and we made the flyer already. (laughs) And it's coming up at the end of August. I just want to ask if you would mind bringing me up and bringing me to your parish, A, so that I can meet you. (laughs) that would be awesome, but I'm not going to be traveling around. I'm just sitting home, trying not to spend a dime. I mean, we just went through this conversation about money and times are tough. And so I'm doing my best even just to not drive pretty scary, but I know that we can work something out. I don't have a flat fee because I know that some parishes have issues. So it's just a matter of Having a small conversation, seeing the creative work that two people can do, which is typically me and the pastor or me and the person who's going to be coordinating the event. And that's it. All I need, I don't even need a microphone. I just need a place that I can walk around in. (laughs) And that's it. And then I just sell my books on a small little card table. You know, don't need a big six foot table. That's it. That's all I do. So it is nothing for the people that are hosting it. I can do a few different things. Number one, I can come out and talk about how God has changed my life and how I lived the worldly life, seeking that happiness that never came. I can also talk about prayer, sharing a little bit of my road and journey about how I had no clue how to pray. We can also talk about my experience with Mary, my experience with the Holy Spirit. And also, last but not least, but how do you speak truth to people in this world today? How do we, as Catholic Christians, explain to people why we believe what we believe and why when we follow God's will and use the sacraments that are given to us, how we actually can follow the teachings and be free and happy. So I'm throwing that out there, putting it hopefully on your heart, pray on it, and it's just a matter of saying, hey, Father, can we bring Kendra Von Esch in to speak? I know her. I can get her. And all you have to do is send me an email. Kendra at KendraVonash.com or go to my website, KendraVonash.com and then go to contact and fill out the information and it's the same thing. It emails me exactly the same way. And I'm throwing that out there because I need to get out there. It's not about money, even though I just got done saying that we're looking at every dime we're spending. It's truly about my soul. (laughs) I get so frustrated that we don't have more events in the summer in the church and that when the craziness of the fall comes, it's all about starting school. But this is the time when people need that rooted life in God, where we need that encouragement. We need that inspiration. 
And I'm fairly open and I can come at any time on a weekend, on a weeknight, whatever. Okay. That was my first ask. You know, I can't do this by myself. I could sit here and put videos together and try to market myself all over the place. But in the end, it's really people like you. That's how I get into conferences and parishes. It's people who listen to me and follow me and make the suggestion. So I want to say thank you to everyone who have who has already done that and brought me to their parish conference or business event. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll come back. If it was good, I have more to say. That's what kills me. Sometimes I just have an hour and I just scratch the surface, as you all know. Okay, we're almost done with this 10 minutes. Please listen on or pause it and come back. This is so important. Where am I going? I'm going into the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's part four on Christian prayer, and I think it would behoove you to look at it and to understand that prayer is beautiful. And by the way, there's also a chapter in here that says prayer is a struggle or something to that degree. Prayer is a battle. That's what it is, not a struggle. It's a battle. And that that's truthful. So bear with me. I'm only going to take a few minutes. Great is the mystery of faith. The church professes this mystery in the Apostles' Creed in the first part and celebrates the sacramental and celebrates it in the sacramental liturgy, part two, so that the life of the faithful may be conformed to Christ in the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father, which is part three. We're all talking about the Mass here. This mystery then requires that the faithful believe in it, that they celebrate it and that they live from it in a vital and personal relationship with the living and true God. This relationship is prayer. Boom! Drop the mic. This is what everybody wants. Who doesn't want this wonderful relationship with God? Everybody talks about it. The evangelicals seem to have it nailed. Why can't we Catholics? get into a relationship with God. It's not checking the boxes with prayers and doing all these things, living by these rules. That's, yes, part of it. But you're missing the best piece. And that's this reliance and love, dependence and humility in this beautiful relationship with the Holy Creator, Jesus, his son, the redeemer and the Holy spirit who sanctifies us and lives with us and prompts us, talks to us every single day. Hello. But a lot of the time we are not listening. So what is prayer? This is from my beautiful little flower, St. Therese. For me, prayer is a surge of the heart. It is a simple look turned toward heaven. It is a cry of recognition and of love embracing both trial and joy. And you know, you've pretty much come there if you are embracing all of it, because it's easy to pray when things are going your way. When things are not going your way, you're on your knees in despair and you're begging and you're pleading, but that's not what she's saying. She's saying it's a simple look toward heaven a cry of recognition and of love. Like, Lord, I know these times are tough. I'm going to take them with you so that they're easier and less burdensome. And I accept your will joyfully. Even if you say those words and don't quite mean those words, it'll go a long way. <clears throat> okay, there's three little things here that I want to quickly review. And again, all you have to do is type in uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church, Christian Prayer, Part 4. And it will go through so much stuff. You really need to learn what prayer is and maybe relearn how to speak with God. Okay, prayer is... God's gift to us. 
It's a gift. That's why we need to work on it. We need to exercise it like a virtue. But ultimately, those consolations and those beautiful moments, those supernatural and mystical moments that you have are true gifts from God. Prayer is the raising of one's mind and heart to God or the requesting of good things from God. But when we pray, do we speak from the height of our pride and will or out of the depths of a humble and contrite heart? He who humbles himself will be exalted. Humility is the foundation of prayer. Only when we humbly acknowledge that we do not know how to pray as we ought, are we ready to receive freely the gift of prayer? If you knew the gift of God, the wonder of prayer is revealed beside the well where we come seeking the water. There, Christ comes to meet every human being. It is he who first seeks us and asks us for a drink. If you remember, Jesus at the well with the woman. Woman, give me a drink. This is what he says. This is his constant (laughs) cry out to us. He's thirsty for a relationship with us. Jesus thirsts. His asking arises from the depths of God's own desire for us. Whether we realize it or not, prayer is the encounter of God's thirst with ours. God thirsts that we may thirst for him. Another quote, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Paradoxically, our prayer of petition is a response to the plea of the living God. Let's think about this. Our prayer of petition is a response to the plea of the living God. So he's constantly calling out to us, do we pray back? Do we talk back? Another quote, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn out cisterns for themselves broken cisterns that can hold no water. Prayer is the response of faith to the free promise of salvation and also a response of love to the thirsty, whoops, (laughs) to the thirst of the only Son of God. So again, this is us, our currency, our time, our love, our heart. If we're humbly praying, because we don't know how to pray and we're asking the Holy spirit to come into our heart and we're responding to God. Who's calling us. Hey, what about me? When are we going to get together? When are you going to pray to me? When are you going to thank me for the the blessings that I've given you in your life? When are you going to come talk to me or come listen to me for that matter? Okay. Part two, there's only three parts. Prayer as covenant. God makes covenants, not contracts, like heartfelt, unbrokeable, breakable, excuse me, covenants. Where does prayer come from? Whether prayer is expressed in words or gestures, it is the whole man who prays. But in naming the source of prayer, scripture speaks sometimes of the soul or the spirit but most often of the heart. More than a thousand times, Scripture says that prayer comes from the heart. According to Scripture, it is the heart that prays. If our heart is far from God's God, the words of prayer are in vain. In other words, when you're just sitting there rattling through your... Oops. That was my computer. When you're rattling through your rosary or whatever prayers just to get them done, they don't count. They're in vain. You're just sitting there going through the motions if your heart isn't in it. That's why it's so important to just focus on quality, not quantity. And when I say quality, it's that time where you are sitting and receiving where you are truly understanding God's voice, 
not your voice, not the world's voice, not Satan's voice, God's voice. And putting that into action in your day. Okay, where are we? Okay, the heart is the dwelling place where I am, where I live. According to the Semitic or biblical expression, the heart is the place to which I withdraw. The heart is our hidden center. Beyond the grasp of our reason and of others, the only, only the spirit of God can fathom the human heart and know it fully. This is why we shouldn't judge others' actions because we don't know where their heart is. Why did they do what they did? There may be multiple reasons. Only God fully can fathom the human heart and know it. The heart is the place of decision deeper than our psychic drives. It is the place of truth where we choose life or death. It is the place of encounter because as images of God, we live in relation. It's the place of covenant. Christian prayer is a covenant relationship between God and man in Christ. It is the action of God and man springing forth from both the Holy Spirit and ourselves, wholly directed to the Father in union with the human will of the Son of God made man. It's all in the heart. That's where God lives. Okay, prayer as communion. This one's the last little one point piece. In the new covenant, prayer is the living relationship of the children of God with their father, who is good beyond measure with his son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit. The grace of the kingdom is the union of the entire holy and royal trinity with the whole human spirit. Thus, the life of prayer is the habit of being in the presence of the thrice holy God and in communion with him. This communion of life is always possible through baptism. We have already been united with Christ. Prayer is Christian in so far as it is communion with Christ and extends through the church, which is his body. Its dimensions are those of Christ's love. That's it. That's all they put in that little section. So it is this new covenant. Prayer is the living relationship of the children of God with their father, who is good beyond measure, with his son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit. A living relationship. Do you have a living relationship with God? Or do you follow some sort of checklist, routine? Are you speaking and living and feeling God prompt you throughout the day? And feeling when you shut him down or ignore him? Do you reflect on your day and see where you heard, saw, felt God in your life? And when you didn't? or when you weren't even thinking about him, or when you denied him. This is the relationship that builds and builds and builds, and I want this for everyone. But I think we need to be reminded of what beautiful prayer means. It means an intimate relationship with God. Intimate. It's the best relationship one can have with anything on this earth. It is better than the relationship with my family, with my spouse, with my kids. Because it's never boring. I'm always being challenged. I'm constantly learning. I'm always feeling the love, especially at the times when I'm not really loving myself or being that loving to those around me. I 
I want you to take that commitment to bring this beautiful relationship that we are all called to. We are made for God. We are made for a relationship with God. All we need to do is choose to respond to that constant calling, that thirst that Jesus on the cross spoke to all of us. I thirst. He doesn't thirst because he's actually thirsty. He's thirsting for our souls to reach out to him and to find that living water, to find that final peace, that joy. And when I say final, it's the one that we've all been looking for. Find something more with God, because that's where it's at, my friends. And I want that for all of you. So take that step. Check out my prayer program. Get 40 days under your belt. Learn more about the Catholic Church and all of the beautiful sacraments. Learn about how we have so many resources and such a heavenly army in this church to help us every single day. Go to somebody else's stuff. I don't care. Just do something. Take that step to reignite your prayer life or to ignite it, to start it. Because I remember one more thing. I remember when I first started, I was like, this seems like a lot of work. (laughs) And I'm not one to put a lot of work into anything. Like I said, sensuality is my root sin. I'm okay just kind of sitting in the day to day and not jumping outside of that box. But God constantly challenges me to do so. And when I was started that journey, he gave me so many beautiful consolations that truly kept me coming back, that kept me fighting through the distractions, that kept me from being lazy and laying in my bed instead of getting up and praying or being distracted by what's going on in the world. One of the best things is being able to not care what's going on in the world and to give God that 20 minutes, it seems like nothing. And it really isn't. It's not a lot of time. But instead of getting in the car and maybe putting the rosary on in my vehicle over Bluetooth and praying it as I'm driving... I'll go into adoration and pray it in front of Jesus, totally focusing on the mysteries, not allowing my mind, and when it does, because we all know it does, pull it right back into the prayer, mastering my mind instead of allowing it to master me. Okay, sorry, I'm getting on a on a box here, and I don't mean to, but that is why... <laughs> I'm going through this to remind everybody in the midst of we're going to be hitting July. Seven months into this year, how are you doing on increasing your spiritual life with God? That beautiful relationship that only gets better the more time we put into it. Okay, do it, please, please. And don't forget, mention me. So I can come out and meet you. Maybe do dinner. I don't know. Something. (laughs) I'm missing people a lot. Okay. On that note, I love you all. Find something more with God in prayer and live in his spirit. Be a Mary. In all of the woes that she had, she always had joy and peace and trust. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, and have a blessed and inspired day.